Welcome to State of Tech. Let's take a look at how to use Impair the Remote app for iOS with your Apple TV. Now one of the major reasons I would recommend using the remote app from your iOS device would be the keyboard. So if I were to show you an example here in the search field up at the top of the screen is going to be the keyboard that comes with the Apple TV that you have to swipe across and do all the input letter by letter with the Siri remote. But if you were using the remote app on iOS, you'd actually be able to use a full-blown keyboard to go ahead and do any of your text input. So the way that you do this is you first have to go into your settings and make sure that you have home sharing enabled. So come into settings, we're going to go down into accounts, and then down below in the middle of the screen underneath accounts, you're going to see home sharing. Currently I have this enabled so I can see my home sharing email address, but if I click in here, if I didn't have home sharing on, I'd have the option of turning this on and then go ahead and enter in my Apple ID, email address, and password to enable that. And now the next step is actually going to be enable home sharing on the iPod, iPhone, or iPad that you're going to be using for this. And we're going to head over to that device and show you what that looks like. So here we have an iPod and I've downloaded the remote app from the App Store. I'm going to go ahead and open this and it's going to bring me here into the screen where I can either add a device or set up home sharing. So I'm going to set up home sharing, go ahead and tap on that, and then it's going to ask me to enter in my Apple ID and password. Now I've already done this on the Apple TV, I need to make sure that the same Apple ID and password that I've set up home sharing on the Apple TV with is the one that I enter here. So now that you've entered in your Apple ID, email, and password, tap sign in in the top right hand corner. This is going to verify your Apple ID, make sure that you entered in all the account information correctly. And now that it's done, and you see you'll get this home sharing is using, gives you your Apple ID email address, and now I can control iTunes or the Apple TV. Go ahead and tap OK, and I'm going to notice a few Apple TVs pop up in here. We have a couple here set up, and the one that we're mainly going to want to control is the living room. If you have more than one Apple TV set up, you're going to see them all here in this section, but the only one that we're concerned with right now is the one that we've set up in the living room, as that's the Apple TV that we've been dealing with. So now if I tap up here on the living room app, what it's going to do is load in and connect to the Apple TV. And notice now I have this remote looking interface. I have menu down at the bottom of the screen, which acts like the menu button. I have this drop down menu, which is going to allow me to go ahead and drop down select items on the Apple TV. I have this gesture pad up here on the top of the screen. It allows me to swipe directions. I have the play pause in the bottom right hand corner. And if I tap on now playing, what this will show me is what's currently playing on the Apple TV. And then I can use all of my controls from there. So you notice it's actually playing a song that we had on the Apple TV earlier. And I can go ahead and use all of my playback controls right here on my iPod. And what's great is if I have another Apple TV set up, I can quickly jump into devices and go ahead and connect to that Apple TV just by tapping on the icon. And then it loads up the same screen as we saw earlier and gives me the Apple TV that I'm connected to up the top of the screen. So that's another reason why naming your Apple TVs, if you have more than one, could be really important. Because when you come back out to this device section, you're going to see just the Apple TV icon and whatever the name the Apple TV is.